Hey guys, I think this is as good a time as any to start doing some serious um, organizing down here in the basement. So during the rat incident, I um, discovered there was mold in the wall, looked like from some old water damage, so had to take that wall out. Then we got a new furnace, we had new duct work done. During all that, I moved just about everything. Some of it's uh, been reorganized, uh, like my tubes are much happier with that, but uh, the rest is still pretty chaotic. Uh, I also got some sets done that have been sitting around here for a long time, and they'll be getting out of here, so they'll free up some space as well. So, notably, this corner had been packed with sets for five years since we moved in. Some of them have been starting to migrate back over there, and that's why I'm thinking, okay, before everything gets back to where it used to be, let's stop and do some organizing. So, coincidentally, there was a sale on these workbench heavy-duty shelving kits at Lowe's. They're half off, just 20 bucks a pop, so I got two of them. They are a quick and easy, fast system to take a few 2x4s, a couple sheets of plywood, and make a workbench or heavy-duty shelves. I'm going to make one of them, I think, for this corner. And I'm thinking about setting up this corner as a dedicated tube and pitcher tube testing area. In the past, I've kept all my testers, like my 600A, buried back there. I, 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 I dig them out, I use them, I put them all back, uh, all the cables back in and close them up and pack them away again. A few days later, i got to pull it out again, and I keep going back and forth. It's, it's silly. There's electricity over here. We've got four outlets. Also, because of the low duct work here, it's not a very practical area to do much. That's why I just had stuff stored here. There's not enough head height to really do anything practical over here. So, I think that's a great place for it. Eventually, these two walls may very well come out. The other side of this wall, I already took out the drywall and the, the siding. It's just uh, some 2 by 4s I love this wall up because of the electricity and because the mold damage was pretty insignificant. This is what I'm talking about. They're made by Simpson. They're Strong Tie is their uh, brand name for these metal corner fasteners. In this kit you get a set of eight of them and a bunch of uh, wood screws. And here's the cut list if you want to make the thing that's pictured with the pegboard and all that. Uh, I may, may not. I don't know that I really have much use for a pegboard. Um, but I probably would have some use for some type of hangers for cables or storage for tubes or, or something up above it. I gotta see, uh, I gotta figure out how high do I want to make this given that I have reduced head height. So the whole point of this kit is to make it easy to join three boards together in the corners. Just like with joist hangers or other metal conveniences that exist now to help you with framing. The downside is you lose some strength. So on these sides, the vertical part goes straight through, then the two side pieces meet, then you join them with screws. The boards do not attach to each other. The boards do not overlap. There are no half-lap joints. There's no mortise and tenon, nothing like that. So all the strength comes from this metal and the screws. There are stronger ways, for sure, to do this. So when it comes to making my full-size real workbench, I'll be working on TV chassis, I'm not going to use these. But for lighter duty workbenches or shelves, yeah, sure, absolutely. So all i got to do is take my chop saw, take some 2x4s, figure out the dimensions I want, cut up a bunch of wood, uh, cut, cut up a bunch of 2x4s, grab these uh, pieces of metal, lay it out so everything is square and level, and drive the screws in, and I'm done. Alright, so we've got our kit, we've got an idea. We need some 2x4s. I could go to my local home improvement center, dig through a pile of very warped, overpriced 2x4s, or 
I can look through some that I salvaged when I tore out the walls down here. It was mostly metal studs, but there were some 2x4s and I saved them. These are decades old. I don't know exactly how old, but they're old. And the grain is much tighter than you're going to see in most lumber yards today. And these are nice and straight, and they're not going to warp. They're aged. They're, they're good to go. Uh, except for, well, there are drywall screws and nails in them I have to get out. This one is really nice. Uh, the other one has a little bit of mold here and there, so I might not use that one. Some up at the other end, too. But we have other options. We are now in the carpeted half of the basement. There used to be a door here with a lock on it. They rented this space out. And over here was a closet that could lock. I took the doors off of this and took some of the framing out ages ago, and that's where I got the lumber to build my current workbench. Well, there's still more we can take out. One, two, three two-by-fours right here that can come out. They're doing nothing. They don't hold anything up. These are just here for framing for that closet and for this door. They just come up to this uh, hacked up metal header and the bottom goes to some plywood. I mean, heck, if I, <laughs> if I really took this floor up, I could maybe reuse that plywood for the workbench because that's the other thing we need is some plywood. But these, uh, for sure, these two should be easy to come out. And here is the saw I'll be using, and before I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do something I've been putting off for ages, which is to square this up. I've known for a long time it's off a little bit in both directions. What do I mean by that? I mean the blade is not perfectly square going this way, and it's not perfectly square going this way. It's not terrible, but it's enough that things don't join up perfectly. I looked up instructions on how to square up the saw to the fence. I need an Allen wrench. I have spent way too much time looking for an Allen wrench, so I'm giving up and it's going to go with it as it is. It's not that bad. I can't believe I have one really comprehensive set of Allen wrenches. I know I used it when I worked on a Tektronix scope recently to take the knobs off and put them back on. No clue where it is. I also have a box of assorted Allen wrenches. Cannot find it. I have a couple smaller sets. Cannot find those. I have all these DeWalt tool chests to organize things. I just got recently got a whole bunch of vintage tools. I cannot find a single Allen wrench to save my life. So, I've wasted enough time on that. We're going to move forward. Uh, I'm going to take some scrap lumber and get this up a bit on a level surface. And... Um, Start by cutting off the chewed up ends so we have a clean surface to work with. Measure out four feet and I'm going to cut the four long pieces to start out with. Since the garage is currently unoccupied, I thought I'd move operations out here. It's a sunny day, although it's in the 20s. But I'll survive. And of course, as soon as I came out here, I found a set of hex wrenches. However, none of them quite fit right. This must be metric. And these are English. Uh, I found one that was close enough. I was able to loosen these, so now I can adjust this fence a little bit. Basically, you just lower the saw and to make sure that it's square. You can see right now it's definitely off. It's uh, it's got to go clockwise a bit. Anyways, uh, I also installed batteries so we get the laser sight. Woo uh, so I'm gonna first clean up the ends and then mark it off. Now it turns out, I looked on the box, that the instructions they have are for a bench four feet wide. And uh, the way they orient the legs, they, they go over the side pieces. So I should actually cut the, the long pieces 45 inches. And it'll be one and a half inches added on each end because of the legs. So I'm glad I, I noticed that. Uh, so without further ado, let's, let's get to cutting some wood. I know I keep saying that, but I'm going to say it one more time. That is some really nice wood. That is some nice, tight green pine. New stuff would be maybe like eight rings or something. Uh, this has dozens. So glad I'm able to make use of this. I was talking about that laser pointer, but actually now that I had tweaked the bent the uh, the fence a little bit, uh, it's actually kind of dead on. So wherever the laser line is, 
that will be left. It will cut just to the right of that. So uh, in other words, I put my line at 45 inches, I put the laser at 45 inches, I cut down, working out great. Hey, I finally found markings on one of them. OLMA register 71 stud spruce pine fir. Does that mean 1971? I could believe that. That sounds about right. So that would be a what 50 year old piece of wood. You want an example of new lumber? Well, this was a straight 2x4 when I bought it. Now it's a banana. And check out those growth rings. They're like half an inch apart. That's why it warps so badly. I was thinking maybe I could use this for the side pieces. I don't think I can. Maybe the section towards me, it's straight for maybe a couple feet, but the rest of it is just completely useless. Slight change of plans. Since I've got two of these kits, for the first one, I'm just gonna go with the dimensions they give, which gives a finished top of exactly two feet by four feet, which means I will be able to cut this board in half and use it for the top. Also, the way the legs get arranged, that means that the side pieces only need to be 17 inches long to end up with a total of 24 inch depth. I was keep forgetting I need legs too. Um, but let's see, so we're gonna need one, two, three, four, 17 inch pieces. So uh, I think these two are in good enough shape. I can probably use them. This one's too rotted out. I grabbed another piece out of the basement. It's got some screws driven into it I can try to get out. I might just have enough to make four 17 inch pieces. That leaves the legs for that. Uh, I fear, I, well, I still have that one two by four on the wall I can rip out. And that'll give me two legs. If I can find one more six foot long two by four, we'll be in good shape. So I'm gonna make a three foot tall bench. I was able to get all four 17 inch pieces for the uh, side rails. Enough wood for two legs, and I cut that uh, one by eight and a half for the top. Here's a look at the plans actually on the side. And the one thing I'm deviating from possibly is they show the back legs going up higher with a beam across, and you're supposed to put a pegboard on there. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. Um, but uh, since I need lumber for two more legs, you know, I do have the option. I could get longer ones. Downside to that is then you need to notch out the top for those two longer back pieces. And if you put a shelf on it, you need to notch out all four corners. I've got a jigsaw. It's not a, not a big deal. Otherwise, yeah, we've got our two 45-inch pieces, or four of them, I should say, and four 17-inch pieces and two 36. So if we wanted to make that back taller, we need two 58 inch pieces. So at some point I will have to go to the lumber yard because I can't find anything else to scavenge and uh, see what I can find. Well, you know what? When I got to the Home Improvement Center, I remembered that they have an area of pre-cut sort of DIY lumber and a lot of it was two by four so i can imagine that's why they have the plans for that so you know i caved and i bought a nice piece of two by four plywood and pegboard and i am just going to follow their plans as is and it was depressing but eventually <laughs> i dug through the premium two by fours and found a couple that were more or less straight and they seem pretty dry so i'm hoping they don't warp too much they got knots the growth rings are large, but after digging, rejecting like 50 of the things, um, they were about six bucks a pop. Uh, they had three different piles with all slightly different prices. The wood all looked basically the same to me, so I don't know what their premium versus select versus very good, whatever they, whatever they were calling them, they all looked the same to me. Uh, anyways, so... They say they should be 58 inches long, but my my math, if 36 plus 24, plus you put a two by four across the top, so we subtract an inch and a half, 
and then add about half an inch back for the thickness of this. I think 58 and a half makes more sense. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'll figure out which is a slightly nicer end and go from there. I cleaned out the corner where the new workbench is going to reside. As you can see, I could have made it a little bit longer, a little bit deeper, but this is good. If I had gone bigger, I would have had to get a 4x8 sheet of plywood and cut off and discard a, a good portion of it, so no waste. And I got to recycle all that lumber, so that's good. Now, one thing I hadn't given much thought to is when they installed new ductwork recently, they put a dip right where I'm going to be putting this, and I hadn't thought about the height. It turns out it just fits with a little bit to spare. And speaking of height, uh, there are minimal instructions on the outside of the box, no instructions inside, but there was a link to go to their website, get the full uh, assembly instructions, which I did, and I printed out the key page, which shows how it fits together. Now, I thought that that pegboard was going to go on the inside, but it turns out it's going on the back side of it. That accounts for that extra half inch because they have the pegboard overlapping the top surface plywood. I thought it would be going to the right, and it would be sitting on top of that plywood surface. So I actually do need to cut out that extra half an inch. And uh, unfortunately there's going to be one board I'm missing, which is a cross timber. There needs to be a uh, the top rail, the four foot long piece that ties the whole top together. I don't have any lumber long enough left over, so save that for another day. Once I get it put together, I can just pop that on the top anytime and drive some screws in. Alright, uh, they say you don't need to pre-drill. Um, we'll see how that goes. They also gave some instructions on how to start and how to clamp these together. Uh, and this is nice because they give you the height for where all these things should reside. That seems pretty simple to me. You line up the rail and one of the legs so that they're flush on top and then you put the bracket in below. I don't know that I really need to make it exactly 21 and you know whatever three A's high. I just need to put it at the top, at the, sorry, at the bottom of the 2 by 4 when the two pieces are flush on top. It doesn't matter what the distance is. It's probably make a little more sense if I show you how it goes together. This carpet isn't exactly level, so I simply took the top of the workbench, put it down, and we're going to build this upside down at least to start out with. So the way they designed this is that in each corner you have three boards come together. Side rail, front or back rail, and uh, a leg. And they come together like so. And that's why those side pieces only had to be 17 inches long even though it's 24 inches deep. Because each 2x4 adds uh, three and a half inches to the uh, overall depth of it. And likewise, the front didn't need to be 48 inches wide because we're adding an inch and a half at either end via the leg. Then you drive about 12 screws into each one of those corner steel plates. This is what I mean by I don't care about measuring the distance to where this should be. This should be such that all the boards are flat against the top. And then we're going to just drive the screws together. We'll use a uh, clamp to uh, secure that a little bit better before we drive the screws in. Again, they just say no pre-drilling, so we shall see. Now they say you don't need a pilot hole. I disagree. Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble getting the screws started. Perhaps just tapping it with a hammer would help. The screws are sort of self-tapping. They have a channel cut into them, so it'll bite into the wood more, I imagine, but getting them started uh, not so easy. Driving them in isn't so easy either. Alright, one screw down. <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab a hammer and try tapping in this next screw. See if that makes life any easier. One down, seven to go. These two inner screws are a pain, but they definitely uh, help tie it all together. Side piece is a little loose. There's only one screw holding it after all, so I can kind of bend it a bit. But uh, once I get more 
of this put together it'll it'll be stronger and that's not the kind of it's not really a, the main weight bearing member anyways this has a lot more screws in it as does this and that that joint is very tight after finishing the two shorter legs I flipped it right side up to do the longer legs here you really do need clamps um, and it's a good idea to make sure that the height is the same on the tops of all of these boards. At the point now, I just have a few screws left to put in. It's it's much more stable. Uh, once this uh, board is completely secure, uh, I guess the next step will be to put on the lower shelf, and then I'm going to need to notch out uh, the plywood, and that'll be about it. They didn't mention specifically that I saw about how to attach the top. With the notches cut out, it'll pretty much stay in place on its own, but maybe a nail or a screw or something in the two front corners would help out with that. Now that I've done a bunch of these, I'm finding it easier to do it without drilling, without nailing. Kind of a matter of finding the right speed and pressure to get it started. Also depends on the piece of wood. Some of this wood is softer than others. Like this new lumber is softer than this old stuff. Which not surprise me. There you go, once it grabs, I gotta put more muscle onto it. There we go, piece of cake. I marked out the notches with a square and a pencil and cut them out with a uh, crosscut saw. Didn't screw up, <laughs> it fits pretty snugly and uh, this is quite stable, especially when it's pushed against the back wall there. You know, that, that, that's not going anywhere. We still have to put the shelf down here which will make it even, uh, or strengthen it even more. Uh, now the pegboard, that's what I was confused about at first. I thought that they were going to have it go in front of the back 2x4s. Uh, and if that was the case, I'd be in trouble because it is definitely bumping into this. But it goes behind them, which is which in hindsight makes more sense because otherwise you would lose all this uh, workbench surface. So I will adjust the height on it. Um, I'm not sure if I put a 2x4 across the top here, that may just bump into that. I'll have to, I'll have to see. Uh, but the idea is this, this goes behind and it attaches with screws into the backs of these vertical supports and the back of the back of the workbench. And then you put a piece of wood across the top and you secure it on that. All right, what next? Well, a little break, eat some food. And... Um, and I guess start tackling the lower shelf, which may or may not be more difficult. It may be easier because this thing is now a stable unit, but it may be more difficult because now it's harder to get in and around to attach all those screws. <laughs> we'll see. And as far as the height goes, they give a recommended height. I should probably give some thought to what I might be putting on that shelf make sure it'll fit. For example, if I want to put tube caddies or tube testers down here, I want to make sure the shelf is low enough that they don't bump into this. I also don't want to put the shel uh, shelf super low such that I can't put anything under it. Um, I'm going to think about it. So i got carpet down here. I'd probably the only thing I'd want to put under the shelf would be in plastic bins, like plastic bins of commonly used tubes, for example. So I will see how tall the plastic bins are that I have and make sure that they fit under there with a little bit of headroom and then I'll, I'll mark that is where my lower shelf is going to be. Yeah, this is going to work out fine. Uh, plastic bin is just over 12 inches tall. I'll leave uh, an extra inch or so, put the shelf in around here and then here's a standard kind of tube tester size. Uh, plenty of room left over for that. It will work out great. My thing is, uh, if I put these bins under here, let's see how far back do they go. Yeah, I just want to have some foot room. 
You know, I don't want to have stuff sticking out all the way here. I'll be constantly bumping into it. And now the final screw. This has definitely gotten easier the more I've done. All right. That is it, uh, except for cutting out the notches on the shelf and dealing with the pegboard notches. I might save that for tomorrow. I'm a little burned out. But I do want to see about attaching the pegboard. Yeah, after doing all the corner brackets, there are only three screws left over. So if you want to secure the workbench top or put a pegboard on the back, you definitely need to pick up some extra screws. I had a bunch of deck screws left over, so that's what I'm using. That's it. I gave in and took one more trip to the Home Improvement Center to get the top 2x4. Also, in the interest of saving time, I bought one that was pre-cut to 4 foot length, so I don't have to bother with any of that. I just put it up on top. It's slightly bowed. I put the bow up. Uh, well, I think you can see if you follow the holes in the peg. The hump is kind of around here. <laughs> and I also looked through all the, I don't know what you call these things, the metal ties, I guess. Uh, and that there is a very large assortment. So not just these, these Simpson Strong ties, and of course there are joist hangers. There is a wide variety of metal strapping thingies. All sorts of stuff for putting posts and the concrete and uh, joinery like, like this and pretty much anything you can think of if you want to join two or more pieces of wood together at a right angle they've got a, something that will make it a little bit easier so I picked up a couple of these which go on like so if I didn't have the pegboard already on the back I could have put them on the back side but I'll put them on the front I mean it's not like there isn't a bunch of steel showing on the front already so no big deal there and I gotta admit, I like these for doing stuff like this. This is not quality lumber. It's got warps and twists and it's tough to make right angles with this stuff. Unless I ran it through a joiner or something, which I don't have. So these make it easy to, well, to make right angles, to make corners and to secure things together without having to make a mortise and tenon or a dovetail or you know any number of joints that one could make so I will put one of those on each corner and drive in some screws and that will be done so that's it except for one thing I need to treat the workbench top talk about that in a moment First, let's talk about what I'm going to use this for. As I mentioned earlier, for testing tubes. I want to have a good, solid, reliable, versatile tube tester, pitcher tube tester, out here at all times. Depending on how much room I have left, I may put the uh, Midwest cathode beamer up here or some other less commonly used but cool to look at <laughs> test equipment. But for sure, um, I want to put, that's my Hickok 600A. It can do about 90% of the tubes that I typically work with. Everything from the late 20s uh, through the 60s. I can't do Compactrons or New Vistas. I have other testers that can do that, but they're not transconductance. They're not as high a quality tube tester. So those I'll put on the shelf below and use them when I need to. Might also want to put my Cardmatic tube tester out here, which basically does all the same tube types as the 600 but it's easier and faster to use and some of these TVs I work on have 30 tubes in them and it's much easier to swap out a punch card than to change all the controls it's also newer this has tubes in it it has to warm up the cardmatic is just good to go it's solid state I also want a picture tube tester and you might be thinking well you put your Suncor CR70 out here it's the one you use all the time for everything yeah but it's also fiddly to set up. I don't have the right adapters for the tubes that I most commonly use. So I'm more inclined to put out a B&K 440, which is a real basic, simple model. 
but solid state plug it in good to go without any adapters this this socket covers like 80 percent of the pitcher tubes i work with and then it has the adapters for the other types would be like the smaller base for the predictor pitcher tubes and it does all the common filament voltages the predictor filament voltages three nice big neon bulbs really easy to read a nice big meter uh, it's reliable I would not use this to fix a short or to rejuvenate but to test emissions to see if the pitcher tube is good see if it's gassy or not good simple device now also notice these covers they take up a lot of space like this is blocking a large section of the pegboard so I will take those off and leave these devices plugged in now, however that means they will get filthy because they're just you know all the in controls and the meters are flat down dust is going to settle on them so I'll want to make some kind of cover for now I'll just throw a sheet over this but if I want to get fancy I can put like a retractable shade kind of thing attached to the top that would pull down and secure down down here somewhere you know like a roll top oh uh, we have a blank spot over here maybe a great place to put a shelf put in uh, my tube uh, data books, picture tube data books, manuals for my testers. So, so a little bit of a space up here, it goes up kind of high. Um, I can put some stuff up there, basically treat that 2x4 as a shelf, put some stuff up there. Um, oh hey, guess what I found while cleaning up down here, my full set of Allen wrenches just in time to not be useful for this project. But at least I know where they are, they will go back in the toolbox where they're supposed to be. So that really just leaves one item, the workbench surface. I have to do something to this. You can see it's already gotten scuffed up over here for me sliding around some test equipment. You don't want to just have raw plywood for your workbench surface. It's going to absorb any liquids that get spilled onto it. It's going to pick up scuffs. So if you drag around some heavy metal chassis, it's going to really gouge up the wood. In the past, I've put a sheet of masonite over this with the shiny side up. Or the smooth side up and that I would periodically change it out as it gets chewed up. I'm thinking uh, maybe I could put a couple coats of polyurethane or some other type of durable paint. If I want to go crazy I could laminate it um, and I imagine there are other options too so I'm going to leave it like this for now and be looking for your comments if any of you have experience with making a DIY workbench with a plywood top on how to make this surface more durable. Here's a look at it from a little bit further back. Could I have made it a little bit wider? Yeah, probably about six inches, maybe a little more before I'd run into the outlets on the wall. Could I have made it deeper? Yeah. But I bought two of these kits. They were on sale, 20 bucks a pop. I figured, hey, why don't I just follow the directions and see what I get. And I'm perfectly happy with this. If I ever want to make a bigger bench, I certainly have use for this. I could put it somewhere else and build another one with slightly larger dimensioned wood. But again, 2 by 4 is pre-cut, ready to go. Just grab them off the shelf and you're done. If I wanted a larger one, I'd have to buy a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood and cut it down. And I would end up with waste. So that was the other reason I went with this. Again, for my full-size workbench, the 8x3, I'm going to have to do totally go on my own. But this gave me a lot of ideas about how to secure the wood together using these type of steel corner brackets. So again, they have the shelf below, plenty of room for more test equipment. And then down below, plenty of room for bins. Uh, I'll be putting tubes in there, the ones I most commonly use. Uh, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this look at building a simple, basic workbench using the Simpson strong tie system using just two by fours and plywood. Overall, uh, very happy with the way it turned out. My only slight issue is if you want to build the workbench they show on the box, you don't have enough screws. You're going to have to um, buy a few more to secure the pegboard and to secure the cross piece of wood up at the top. That's a minor thing. Um, other than that, uh, I highly recommend it. That's all for now.